it's a very good afternoon so in this session we are going to uh, discuss further about uh, the process of solidification in crystalline materials so we have discussed about the science of solidification process and thereafter we discussed about the different type of and we have seen that there are three parts three sections like nucleation followed by more nuclear formation that is growth and then finally the crystallization will come to an end and we also discussed about how the dendrites are formed or the dendritic growth and we have seen what do you mean by a grain and uh, the grain boundary so we uh, so we dis already discussed about the uh, single crystal and the polycrystals we have seen what is meant by a polycrystalline material and what is a single crystallization so for more precisely let us define like this so when the uh, liquid metal or the uh, molten metal is cooled from its equilibrium condition that is during solidification process of course uh, it is known that there would be large number of nucleation sites and the liquid solidifies into large number of small grains so there would be large number of nucleation sites means from there which more um, nuclei may be formed at the same time simultaneously okay so if if all the nucleation sites except one are suppressed then the liquid solidifies into a single grain so that is a single crystal so that is what is shown here if all nucleation sites except one is suppressed then the liquid solidifies into a single grain okay so but uh, generally there would be large number of nucleation sites and liquid solidifies into large number of small grains so such crystals are called polycrystals or polycrystalline materials and as we already discussed although the grains look alike which means the atomic arrangement inside each grain may be same but the crystallographic orientations are different i mean the two if you take two grains they are oriented different way and this orientation changes randomly from one grain to another how uh, two grains are oriented will be different from the first and third or the second and third okay so that is about the uh, polycrystals and single crystalline material and um, the polycrystalline i mean the single crystalline materials they have excellent high temperature properties because uh, the grain boundary is absent in single crystal materials you can find this um, in periodic and repeated arrangement of atoms in a single crystalline material which is repeated throughout the entirety of the material as a result this particular property uh, because of this property it can be widely used in some semiconductor uh, industries etc and then yeah we are going to see how the grain size shape and orientation effects uh, how uh, the effect of uh, the grain size and shape and orientation now if we take the grain size what is mean the rate at which the molten metal cool down so we for example um, when, when the when we are allowing the molten metal to cool down yes that is a solidification process isn't it and you will be it is possible to uh, cool down the molten metal in different rates maybe for example at 10 degrees celsius per minute or 20 degrees celsius per minute or 30 degrees celsius per minute you will be able to cool down uh, the molten metal under different rates and it can, it has an effect on uh, the uh, grain size so if it is a slow cooling then uh, if you are doing a slow cooling which means if there is a slow fall in temperature 
it promotes formation of um, relative few nuclei and as a result the resultant crystal size will be large and if you are allowing the rapid cooling rapid cooling then the uh, it results in the formation of a large number of nuclei and which in turn results in large number of small crystals so one is a slow cooling and the, uh, the other one is a fast cooling so if it is a slow cooling the resultant crystal size will be large and if it is a fast cooling uh, you will get large number of small crystals that is the point okay now you know well that the grain size has a very good effect on the mechanical properties and if the grain size is very fine what would be the mechanical property you think about yes of course if if the material have a fine grained structure it is having very good uh, usually it is having very good mechanical properties okay similarly different properties of the materials are controlled by the um, grain size there are methods to control the nucleation process and thereby the material properties so the nucleation process can be controlled for example uh, while we are discussing the last session we have seen that if you are going to add a grain refiner or an inoculant or a nucleating agent to the molten metal during solidification what you will get is uh, you you will be able to produce fine grained grains addition of grain refiner to the molten metal can produce fine grained grains so thereby uh, you can tune the material properties and also uh, it's not only the by adding um, nucleating agents or grain refiners the grain size can also controlled by uh, some thermal treatments uh, they are called the mechano uh, mecha a combination of uh, deformation and thermal treatment they are called the thermomechanical treatments and another important uh, topic let's uh, go into the grain shape how does the grain shape affect so for example when you are going to pour the molten metal into the container or the cavity the cavity to which the molten metal is poured uh, i mean the nature of the container in which the liquid metal cools affect the shape and the number of grains so what is shown in this picture is the nature of grains formed when the solidification takes place in a large container or a mold so when you pour the molten metal into the container when the molten metal first strike the mold you know that the mold is cold during that time okay the mold is cold and has a chilling effect and this chilling effect results in the formation of large number of nuclei and consequently a large number of fine grains along the surface of the solid material i mean uh, the surface of the solidifying metal so you can see the fine grains which are formed at the when uh, at the wall of the container you can see it here okay and once in the molten metal pour to the container after some time you know that the container gets heated up its chilling effects slowly retarded and what will happen to the nuclei formation as when the mold is warmed up and when the chilling effect is reduced the nuclear formation is retarded as the solidification process and look at the crystals formed towards the center of the mold they are larger in size they are known as the uh, columnar grains so the grains these grains are fine grains they are columnar grains okay the columnar grains they are elongated columnar grains and um, you can also see that 
so you can see uh, again um, after some time you can see another type of grains formed you can see quaxed grains so ordinarily three separate zones can be distinguished um, when the ingot is solidified in a large mold so the first zone is a near to the mold walls they are fine grain near to the mold wall followed by a zone of long columnar grains and the third zone this is towards the center of the mold having a coarse and equiax grain so these grains are usually coarse grains and these grains are fine grains okay so uh, depending upon uh, the type of grains formed all these regions process uh, different properties so what is mean by an equiaxed grains here i told you equiaxed what is equiaxed uh, equiaxed grains means uh, when it is having the same dimensions along three coordinate directions the grain is called equiaxed when the grain is having the same dimensions along three coordinate directions okay uh, another important point i would like to discuss is so we discussed about the grain size effect grain shape effect and now the orientation of grains the uh, grains formed having random crystallographic orientations so by using different type of metallurgical techniques uh, you will be able to orient the grain in a particular or specific direction so it is possible that the grains can be made orient some specific direction using some metallurgical technique the manufacturing process like rolling extrusion so by you uh, you will be able to uh, orient or it leads to the grain orientation parallel to the direction of transformation so what is a why should we how the grain orientation has an effect so for look at the example what is the relevance of grain orientation for example the grains of iron oriented along 100 direction having higher magnetic permeability than any other orientation so it is very important okay so it has an influence on its material properties for so the orientation so we discussed about the grain size grain shape effect the orientation of grains now we already told you what do you mean by a grain boundary isn't it the area along which the grains meet is called a grain boundary it's generally known as a region of mismatch because atoms at the grain boundary are irregularly placed so it's a region of disturbed lattice the grain boundary so it is having only few atomic diameters wide um, and at some location along the grain boundary you can find the atoms are so closer they cause a region of compression and at some location you can find the atoms are so far apart it causes a region of tension so moving from one grain to another another important point the crystallographic direction changes abruptly the misalignment between the adjacent grains can be quantified by the angle between the respective crystallographic orientation if you can find out the angle between the respective crystallographic orientation the the misalignment between the adjacent grains can be quantified now for example when the misalignment is of the order of few degrees for example up to 10 degree it is called a low angle grain boundary and for in the where what we call higher angle high angle grain boundary the high angle grain boundary will have more mismatch in the orientation okay so i can say the high angle grain boundary represents the area of the lattice disorder between the neighboring grains and can be viewed as a group of immobile dislocations which forms a step or grain boundary ledge 
Now, as the angle of mismatch increases, the density of the ledge increases, and the ledges are good sources of dislocation. Don't worry about this part which I am discussing. We are going to discuss about the dislocations in the next part, so you will get a better clarity. And whereas the low angle grain boundary can be viewed as a regular array of dislocations. Now, if you look at this um, diagram, you will be able to find out the high angle grain boundary and the low angle grain boundary. So, I already told you the, what is the what do you how can you distinguish the low angle grain boundary and the high, high angle grain boundary. And if the misalignment is of the order of uh, 10 degrees, we will call a low angle grain boundary and more mismatch high angle grain boundary. So, which you can key, uh, see it here. Look at this. I am going to take, I am taking this as grain 1, this is grain 2, this is grain 3. So, these red dotted lines which separate uh, different grains. So, assume that this is grain number 1, grain number 2 and grain number 3. What is the orientation of this grain? This grain, I, I mean it's a grain 2. I can, I am, uh, let me draw a blue line here. You can see this. And what about the orientation of this grain? These grains, this is like this. So this is the angle. This is the angle of misalignment. This is the orientation of grains in this grain. Orientation of grains in this grain. And if we draw some line or which you will get an angle of misalignment. Okay. So likewise, when finding out the angle, you can uh, see that whether it's a small angle grain boundary or a uh, high angle grain boundary. Here you can see this is a small angle grain boundary. The orientation, the angle of misalignment is less. And another important phenomenon which you can observe in um, is the grain boundary sliding. So the grain boundary sliding is a phenomenon observed at temperature above 0.5 Tm, where Tm is the melting point in degree Kelvin, which means when you are going to heat the material above, um, uh, material nearly above uh, half of its melting point, you can observe this uh, uh, phenomenon. So this, uh, it's nothing but it's a deformation uh, occurs by uh, sliding along the grain boundaries. The deformation occurs by sliding along the grain boundaries and um, particularly this phenomenon will lead to creep in crystalline material. Creep is actually a fracture which, which means when a particular material is subjected to a continuous deformation for a long period of time it results in creep. Okay, so I just mentioned it here. Uh, don't worry about it. We are going to discuss about the creep and all in our one of the uh, upcoming modules. So grain boundary sliding is nothing but the deformation of course by sliding along the grain boundaries. So the size of the grains or the average grain diameter uh, in a polycrystalline metal influences the mechanical properties we have seen it. So adjacent grains normally have different crystallographic orientations so grain size has an effect on material property. The grain orientation uh, has an uh, impact we have seen. So adjacent grains normally have a different crystallographic orientation and of course a common grain boundary. So you can see, look at this is actually grain A and grain B. You can see it. Okay. So the adjacent grains have different crystallographic orientations and of course a common grain boundary you can see. And see, uh, during plastic deformation, actually what is happening during plastic deformation? I mean uh, the yielding occurs. Yielding occurs means uh, the uh, there are two way mechan two mechanisms by which the yielding occurs. One is either slip or twinning. So, for example, during plastic deformation, the slip or dislocation motion must take place across the common boundary, say from grain A to grain B. And what will happen? You can see that this grain boundary, which acts as a barrier to the dislocation motion because uh, for two reasons. One reason could be because the two grains are of different orientation, a dislocation passing into grain B will have to change its direction of motion. So this becomes very difficult as the crystallographic misorientation increases. 
and another point is the atomic disorder within a grain boundary region will result in discontinuity of the slip lines uh, from one grain to another so for high angle grain boundaries it may not be the case that the dislocation traverses the grain boundaries during deformation so here the dislocations tend to pile up or back up at the grain boundaries so and when it pile up the pile up introduces stress concentration ahead of the slip lines which generate new dislocations in the adjacent grains so i can say that if you are going to if you take a fine grained material which one that has very small very fine grains is harder and stronger than one that is coarse grained because the former has a greater total grain boundary area to impede the dislocation i hope you understand if it is a fine grained material so um, you can see lot of the grain boundary area in a fine grained material is larger and wherever more grain so if the area of the grain boundary is high we can say that there uh, these grain boundaries which can uh, restrict the motion of dislocation thereby it can strengthen the material okay so fine grain material is harder because of this reason um, and another important point i would like to discuss with you is hull patch equation if you take many materials most of the material the yield strength value what is yield strength we uh, know it's a point at which the yielding occurs so that strength varies with the grain size according to hull patch equation so it gives a general relationship between the yield stress and grain size of the material that is sigma y is equal to sigma o plus ky into d raised to minus 1 by 2 or i can say sigma y is equal to sigma o plus k y by root d where d is nothing but the average uh, grain diameter and sigma o and k y are the constants for a particular material now let us